morning everyone today I'm going to show you how we're going to make some ramen noodles and normally when you make ramen noodle it's a very durable noodle because you want it to be able to sit in the water or in your broth and not fall apart so what we're going to need is this is baking soda that's been baked uh, you take a little bit of baking soda and you're going to put it in a 250 degree Fahrenheit oven and you're going to let it bake for at least one hour. You're going to put it on some parchment and then once it's cooled off you're going to put it in a jar and then you always have it ready for when you need it. So uh, normally it would be two cups of flour if you're serving four people uh, to a half a cup of water. For every cup of flour you would need one teaspoon of the soda. So here we are we have one cup of flour that means I would need a quarter cup of warm water and to this I am going to put one teaspoon of my baking soda that has been baked and turned into an alkaline salt and we're going to mix this and then we're going to pour it into our flour. So while that is dissolving, I'm going to add a little bit of salt to my flour. About a teaspoon of salt. Mix this up. And we're going to add our alkaline water once it has been completely dissolved. Now this is going to give me two cups or two bowls of ramen noodles. So it's going to be perfect for me and my daughter. But this is, like I said, just to show you how we do it. You're going to need maybe one or two uh, tablespoons of extra of extra um, water if needed because it might be too dry. As long as you don't put way too much water, we're going to be good. Erica, would you be so kind as to give me just a little extra water for me in this uh, cup? You don't want to overdo it because then you're going to get a very wet warm water, Erica. Thank you. No, this is good. We're going to put, at a little at a time, I'm putting just two for now. And this is, oh, I'm putting one tablespoon for now because that's a half tablespoon I was playing with. Sorry about that. One extra tablespoon for now and see where it takes us. You don't want this to be a soft noodle. You need this to be a firm noodle. And it looks like you might not have enough, but you have more than enough. There we go. You can now pick this up with your hands and form it into a ball. There you go. That's perfect. Pick up the rest of the flour. So I would say a quarter cup plus a tablespoon of water, warm water. That's all you need. And notice how it kind of made the dough a little yellow. That's the alkaline salt that we used, which was a baking soda prior to it. And this is a perfect, perfect dough. It's firm, yet you can knead it by hand if you have to. And you don't need to suffer if it's too firm, you won't be able to, uh, if you don't have a machine, you won't be able to do it by hand. But this one is just perfect enough to also do it by hand if you have to, if you don't have a machine. There you go. Now we're just going to pick that all up. Let me feel it. Maybe sprinkle just a little extra flour on that and pick that up. You want it to be a firm dough because those noodles really have to hold its own in a hot broth. Once your dough has been formed into a nice ball, you want this to rest at least 30 minutes before you pass it through the machine. Remember the firmer the dough, the better your noodle. There you go. Now if you don't have a machine, I'd say don't add the extra sprinkle of flour. Just leave it with a quarter cup and the one extra, maybe you could even do half a tablespoon of water. 
remember it's all about feel right when you're cooking you have to know what you're what you're getting if you find it's too mushy you know that you're making a very soft dough and if you find that you can't even press your hands into the dough then you're going to need a little extra water so it really is up to you and if it doesn't come into a perfect ball in the beginning that's okay as it sits it will get softer and more pliable you know everybody loves ramen noodles but nobody loves the ingredients in those packages but unfortunately to keep those packages on a shelf you have to put stuff in there to hold a shelf life but a lot of people are worried about how they're how it's affecting their health and they're all trying to make a difference in their diet and you know what it really doesn't take long to do this um, and come tomorrow you just put it through the machine or hand roll them out yourself and you've got beautiful beautiful noodles so it really isn't that much work just think of it if you're making something else besides noodle you're gonna spend your time preparing that food right so this is what you're doing right now you're preparing your dough for your beautiful bowls of miso soup that's gonna have your fresh handmade ramen noodles in it okay so that's it I am gonna leave it in here for about 30 minutes and then I'm gonna come back to you and we're gonna roll this little bit out and we're gonna make a little broth of miso for our noodles so I'll see you in a bit guys so here we are we're gonna make a small broth for our uh, our noodles so I'm gonna add some water there we go and to this we're gonna add some onion so we have half an onion that I'm gonna put in okay we have one two three we've got four baby bok choy we're gonna put in and I'm just gonna cut a portobello in large chunks in four we're gonna add some miso and again taste your broth it's up to you how much you want to put in there we go We're going to put some star of anise and we're going to put a little bit well i call it soy sauce but it's a tamari uh, it's a koyo tamari uh tamari sauce it's not as strong as soy i'm going to put a little bit of that and then we're going to taste it if we want to add more of this or if we want to add some extra salt uh, maybe a piece of chili at the moment all i have is dry so that's what i'm going to use and of course some ginger and ginger again it depends on how on how strong a ginger taste you want so there you go okay so here we go we're going to put this on the burner and we're going to cook this slowly and while we're making our pasta this is going to simmer and then we have our broth ready for our delicious ramen noodles so let's put this aside and remember, it's what you want to put in that broth. And if you want to give it those Asian uh, Asian flavors, you know, you could use lemongrass. Uh, if you don't have lemongrass, what you could do is use a little bit of uh, the rind of a lemon. Uh, you can use uh, a star anise. You can use all these flavors. Even a little bit of sesame oil if you want some soy sauce. Those are going to give you those great Asian flavors. So, um get creative and make a nice broth and now for my dough so I am going to uh, start rolling this out and we're gonna make some noodles okay here's our noodles now remember we made a very small batch And 
and you're going to let the machine help you knead it. So you're just going to fold it in half and you're going to pass it through again. It's not going to look pretty, but what you're doing is you're actually kneading your dough. There you go. All right, that's better. So you're just going to keep passing it through your first notch. And this is going to help you knead your dough. Sound. And then you can start. You could actually feel the difference of the dough because of the baking soda. There you go. Fresh ramen noodles, guys. And there we go. some that fell and there we go beautiful noodles for for dinner so I'm gonna continue making noodles and I'm gonna see you in a little bit when we put it in the broth put the water back on Erica okay here we go for our broth this one like this video and if you do and you give them a try let me know what you think and guess what guys I'll see you in the next one for more videos like this make sure to subscribe to Connie's Rossum Kitchen give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends